I had we had mentioned the fact that hepatitis B viral infection is the most important associated factor in the causation of liver cancer. As an etiologic factor, its importance cannot be overemphasized in the fact that uh, almost 400 million people uh, the world over are chronically infected with this virus. Uh, the important Another important information about this is that although there are effective uh, scientifically proven means of treatment of this virus, uh, some wrong information is already circulating out there uh, and a lot of people have actually spent quite a lot of things to their misery regarding the fact that there is a cure and so uh, they have ended up uh, introducing toxic chemicals in their systems and this has not helped their livers in any significant way and so this is aimed at discussing a little about hepatitis B viral infection uh, the symptoms and signs uh, and also uh, possible investigations and uh, how to go about monitoring and in, uh, invest and, 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 and giving some treatments uh, of course, there are two forms, which is the acute form and the chronic form. Uh, acute does not signify anything about severity. It's only about duration. And so when you say it's acute, it is lasting less than six months. When it's chronic, uh, the infection is lasting beyond six months. Now, most people who acquire this infection as adults uh, clear the virus. Just a small proportion of them would continue. In other words, acute infection is uh, self-curable without any intervention except supportive care, whereas chronic infection is one that lasts long and associated with some sequelae, uh, one of which is liver cancer. Uh, for the chronic infection, which is why I would dwell a lot, uh, most people are asymptomatic in other words they don't have any recognizable symptoms that would suggest they have got any chronic infection uh, most people will have the diagnosis made when they for example go to donate blood uh, and or undertake some medical examination in preparation for taking up a job uh, however there are some that may even be diagnosed with the condition at the chronic stage of the disease where they, yeah, they are almost suffering the uh, end time stage of liver damage, namely including liver cancer, as well as cirrhosis with put hypertension, sometimes vomiting blood. For those that do not have uh, any symptoms, uh, and if they have any person who has got this infection around them uh, and or may have some risk factors uh, which uh, is handled elsewhere, I would advocate that they go have some blood test to check whether or not they have this infection as uh, prevention is better than cure. And as soon as you've got this uh, information, if you do need to check your status, uh, it, it would be very relevant in preventing problems in later life. Now, for those that may have some um, asymptomatic carriers, they are chronic asymptomatic carriers, meaning that they do not have the virus actively replicating in their systems. And that means that the virus itself will uh, be cleared in a small proportion probably less than 1% or about that per year. Uh, for those who have the chronic infection actively replicating and causing uh, damage to their livers, they may experience a few non-specific symptoms such as uh, poor appetite, uh, joint pains, uh, lethargy, uh, some non-specific things like that without any particular weight, a loss in weight or loss of weight rather. Uh, for uh, the third category, uh, where they have already developed uh, cirrhosis, uh, meaning the liver cells have been overwhelmed with a mass of uh, fibrotic tissue, uh, there may be a stage of 
uh, compensation. In other words, the liver function has not completely failed, and in which case there is still actively ongoing liver function, and so the symptoms may not even be different from that of chronic active hepatitis. However, when there is eventual uh, decompensation, meaning that the liver damage has advanced and or liver cancer has developed, then symptoms may vary from having jaundice, which is yellowish discoloration of the eyes, uh, and or abdominal swelling or pain, particularly on the right upper abdominal side, uh, and or even uh, massive weight loss. Uh, and of course, we have this typical saying that uh, in an African or some kind of uh, person in a typical geographic, ge geographical region uh, who has a heart nodular uh, swelling in the abdomen uh, is highly likely to be liver cancer until proven otherwise. This is in a typical scenario. Of course, uh, it is not exciting to talk about these symptoms, but uh, you don't need to wait for symptoms before you check. Uh, if you get to hospital and you're investigated, you're examined, the doctor will be interested in picking up some signs and also looking for um, any jaundice, yellowish eyes or some stigmata of chronic liver disease uh, in the palms as well as the body uh, and examining the abdomen, looking for uh, fluid in the abdomen or some uh, sounds around the liver that may indicate the presence of a nodule or any such thing. Uh, among the initial investigations would include uh, liver function tests uh, and an ultrasound of the abdomen uh, which would give some idea about the presence or absence of a nodule or even information about any fibrotic change or cirrhosis as the case may be. Uh, and of course, advanced investigations may be indicated if there is a nodule found on an ultrasound. Uh, if none is found, then probably it would be best to characterize the need for treatment, in which case uh, hepatitis B surface anti uh, antigen, which is the test that indicates that there is hepatitis. Uh, and if this is the first time they're found it, they may ask to repeat it in six months in order to establish that this is a chronic infection. Uh, once it has been established as chronic, uh, then there would be further tests such as uh, looking for other immunological factors uh, or serology that tells us whether this is revolving or it is um, a silent infection or it's one that is likely to clear itself and or uh, the, there's need for treatment. There are international guidelines out there that suggest what needs to be done, uh, but some of the tests would be about checking the viral count, which is hepatitis B viral DNA, uh, and this can be done. And also, if there is an elevated enzyme, such as the alanine transaminase enzyme, uh, of course, uh, plus uh, any fibrotic change on imaging, uh, and a very significantly raised viral count, uh, these parameters would be uh, read together and if it is appropriate for treatment, you will be offered treatment. Uh, and of course, uh, the other aspects of treatment would be discussed in detail. Uh, as to whether or not there is cure uh, for hepatitis B, I'm cat categorically, I would say today, that as of today, there is no cure uh, for hepatitis B viral infection. At the moment, what is actively being able to be controlled is treatment. And almost like HIV, as long as you suppress the viral count, there's a very low chance of progression of this disease. And in which case, uh, the rate of development of liver cancer is uh, low. Mark my word, I said low because the virus itself has got a capacity to integrate itself into the DNA, which is actually one of the reasons why it's difficult to even uh, pronounce cure. And of course, that becomes the reason why, uh, uh, of course, that the, the, the virus, the medication cannot get through to it. Thank you very much. Bye.